Welcome and thanks for watching. Do me a favor and smash that like button. So I bumped into a couple of articles and it's about the proposal for the desalinization plant that will go in Puerto Penasco, south of Puerto Penasco, an area where Arizona's referred to it as Rocky Point, Mexico. And uh, so this proposal came from a company called IDE out of Israel and they make a lot of uh, desalinization plants around the world. And it's getting kind of confusing because it said that they uh, they were giving us four days to get back to them. And it said, private investors want Arizona to buy water from what could become the largest ocean desalinization plant in North America. And they said, we got, we've got four days to decide whether or not we want to go forward with this. At the time that this proposal came in, all of the water decision makers were at this big conference in Las Vegas. And so, I mean, they, they couldn't have done a worse job of rolling this out and trying to get it rolling. So um, it said the Arizona Water Project Solution Team, a nebulous consortium of companies, and IDE Technologies, that's the Israel-based company, and it says are proposing to build a privately funded plant near Puerto Penasco, Mexico, that would eventually pipe a million acre feet of water annually into the state. Now I'm going in and reading some of the numbers here, and that number seems to be all over the map. Are we getting a million acre feet? How many are we getting? Colorado River uh, delivers about 13 million acre feet in total, I believe, right now. Um, and they had meetings last week because there's another deadline coming up for them on uh, how much more everybody has to cut back because, you know, it, the dams are not getting more water now. We may be getting snow up in the mountains, but uh, there's nothing filling up Powell, uh, Lake Powell or uh, Lake, uh, Lake Mead. So they're going down, 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 and it's getting kind of getting kind of scary. So um, <clears throat> some of the details on the project here, um, <laughs> they presented some of the details on Friday during a hastily called Water Infrastructure Financing Authority subcommittee meeting. Meetings, meetings, meetings. Legislatures reconfigured the board a few months ago and gave it more power to oversee the promised $1 billion in cash. You've heard that before, so we're going to infuse a billion dollars into it. But IDE wants Arizona to purchase its water. So once this is going in, they want us to buy it. But here, here's the kicker. At what price and for whom? So is all that water coming to Arizona? During the 20-minute presentation, they described his plans to build and operate a giant augmentation project that would deliver a game-changing amount of drinking water to Arizona, one that, if says, would not harm sensitive coastal areas of Mexico's Sea of Cortez and could be powered heavily by renewable energy. So here comes the pros and cons of this, and you go over to another... Um, source here and it's uh, az central and they say construction is costly and not guaranteed now they're looking at several different projects and proposals around desalinization and they said they calculated in the report the building to buy national project would cost more than 20 billion in capital costs as much as 500 million in annual costs so that billion dollars that we're kicking over there is going to be eaten up pretty quick it's going to be split in some unknown configuration among Arizona and other participating parties. Its operation could generate 300,000 tons of CO2 per year. Remember the other one said, no, it's going to be renewable energy, so there'll be no CO2. Uh, and it wouldn't be operational until the 2040s, assuming that there's no delays. We go back to this article. And they said that the company said during the meeting that it plans to remove salt from the ocean near the tourist desalination plant we call Rocky Point in Mexico, then pump it uphill into Arizona to a high point within Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. That's where the water's going, not salt. Salt's going to go back in to the ocean. And uh, so there's a lot of discussion of where that salt is going to go. And you get back over to this article, and they're saying um, that that's probably not going to work. That there's going to be there's some real environmental concerns down there, especially uh, with the dolphin population, and it's not a given that they're going to get this permit. So the bottom line is the conversations are starting, and in AZ Central they came out and said there are four cheaper, more secure options, and it says uh, 
The alternatives start with conservation and reuse, which remain powerful options and the low-hanging fruit. We should not pursue a mirage when we can make better use of the water that we already have. Now, one of the biggest conservation things, and we've talked about it here on this show, is that uh, farmers right now consume 80% of our water. So whatever comes out of the Colorado or the aquifers, 80% of that is from farming. Arizona gets 40% of its water from aquifers, from underground water. If they switch from flood irrigation to drip irrigation, according to this article here, they said compared to using sprinklers or drip, or they would use more than, let's see, what's it say? Farmers consume approximately 80% of the water. Agriculture consensus or census of agriculture, I can't talk, found that Arizona farmers use flood irrigation on more than 837,000 acres compared to using sprinklers, drip, or micro irrigation on approximately 233,000 acres. And this is supposed to save them 70% of their water use. So they're proposing that probably the best solution is to take money and put it into that project. It's far cheaper than trying to wait and build a desalinization plant. So they end with this. These options offer a much better way for Arizona to proceed with the dream of desalinating the ocean in a project that will cost tens of billions of dollars and may never be built. So the debates are starting, the meetings are here, the deadlines are right in front of us. If we don't come to a new water agreement uh, by the end of the month, uh, or I think by February 1st, then the feds are going to tell us what we have to do. And you know what? Those All those agreements are is, okay, we'll take 20% less. How much less are you taking? And there's really no water producing solutions, just conservation. And conservation would go a long way in Arizona, especially if we start with farming. Now, there are also going to have to be some major conservation efforts going on. When you look at uh, um, uh, all the building that's going on, when you put a housing project in where there used to be farm, you actually, believe it or not, use less water. So, But there's a lot of building being proposed where there never was a farm. So that's kind of tricky. I saw a comment on here where they were complaining about the Taiwanese chip plant in North Phoenix and how the water they're using. But they're borrowing that water. And they actually deliver it back into the system cleaner than when they got it. So I did a video on that of talking about Intel down in Chandler. So, yes, they use a lot of water, but they borrow it. They filter it and they give it back to us. So that's what's going to happen up to Taiwan, Taiwan plant. We're facing major cutbacks coming up next year. There's no way around it. They're coming. Let's hope we have a great big snowpack in the Rockies. It gives us a little bit of relief, but I doubt it because the ground is so dry. No matter how much snow we get there now, it's going to soak it up. It's going to have a hard time getting down to Lake Mead. So um, the cuts are coming and they're going to hit farming first before you feel it in your front yard so let's just stay close to this and look and see how this desalinization plant process is going to work it's going to be interesting stuff to follow take care thanks for watching